Hi and welcome back to another Tactics Tuesday video. Today we're going to be talking about wind shifts and gusts, how they work, how you should take advantage of them and how to see them. All right. So first of all, we have a well, very, very grainy picture here, but maybe you can see a darker area here, even darker here, and some darker spots here and here. It's quite glassy. It's, it's pretty smooth. So first things first or first thing to learn about gusts, the darker areas usually have more wind. If you have in, in quite light air, um, if you have these glassy areas, completely glassy smooth areas, there might be no wind or very very little wind or then there might be some oil and then it just won't be rippled it's just it's just gonna be smooth so that's something to look out for in light air near big harbors all right but darker spots usually mean more wind that's what you want to aim for now how does the wind shifts work and how should you sail them the basics are that if the wind turns against you, like here we have the wind first coming from the top, then it turns left. And uh, that means if you have to turn more away from the wind to keep the sails flowing in the same, uh, same manner, then you should tack generally. All right. The other way around, we have, we have a lift, this we call a header when the wind turns against us, the opposite when it turns with us is a a lift and then you just want to keep going on that on that tack and the point of all of this is that we want to go more towards our next destination we want to go on the tack that that brings us further towards the next destination so usually the upwind mark or the downwind mark and uh, it's not always quite that simple that every time you get a header you tack because then you'd be tacking very, very often. You have very small oscillations uh, very often. And uh, then you'd just be tacking a lot. And if you have a, a, a quick boat, then you're going to lose a lot of uh, speed on every tack. In the J80, in uh, some keel boats, they glide quite well through the tack. So you don't lose very much, but you still lose some. So we have to look a little bit deeper into the the wind shifts and how they work. So here we have the neutral wind. And next thing we know, we have quite a big shift. We have a 15 degree shift, a header for this boat here. So that's why it has tacked in this second picture. Correct thing to do. Next thing, we have a seven degree header on the new tack. Now, if you just go by headers, all right, we have a header, let's tack then you'd be tacking here, but that would be uh, maybe not a mistake, but uh, depends on where you are on the course. But if you are in the middle of the course, you have far away to go to the, to the ley line still, then this would uh, not be the optimal move because you want, to want, you want to wait for the wind to turn to the other side of neutral before you tack again, because that will bring you most towards the mark. Because even though this has gotten a 7 degree header now, compared to the second picture here in the third, it's still, the fourth tack here is still bringing it more towards the next destination or more towards the neutral wind. So if you tack here, you'll be going in a worse angle than before you attacked before. So that's why we want to keep going here and wait until the wind shifts back to the other side of neutral. So here we have a bigger shift, a bigger header, and now we're plus five degrees from neutral compared to the minus 15 and min minus eight degrees here. So now we want to tack, that's the correct move. Now again, if you're approaching the ley lines and you're close to either side of the course, you, then you have to settle for a smaller shift because you need to you need to get in from the side. You can't just keep going in that direction endlessly. You have to get back towards the center of the course or towards the upwind mark at some point. So then the closer you get to the ley line, you have to settle for smaller and smaller shifts. Some, just anything to bring you with a slightly better angle back towards the middle, all right? And now this obviously requires us to somehow know what the neutral wind is, that requires us to, before the race, 
uh, sail quite a bit on the race course area so that we get a get an understanding of what the neutral wind is and uh, it also requires us to know where we're pointing when we have the neutral wind so a compass would be the obvious choice then you have facts you see it but if you don't have a compass then you can also just stay very alert have someone really look at where where we're heading and where we're heading uh, before the tack and after the tack and so forth and try to try to get an understanding it if we get a big header we tack and then you have to think about if you have a header you need to figure out what's that header now as big or bigger than the before the earlier header which caused it to tack in the first place if it was just a very small header compared to the first one that made you tack then you shouldn't tack all right quite complicated stuff um but one very nice thing about gusts and the shifts are that when we have a gust reaching the surface of the water uh, it's gonna behave like if you would put your hand in water and push it forwards you're gonna create a wave that is shaped like this like a fan so it's gonna push the water to the sides and the gust is gonna do the exact same thing with the wind it's gonna push the gust wind towards the side so it's gonna turn the wind slightly outwards you can also imagine it like slamming down your hand on the table and then what's gonna happen with your fingers is they're gonna spread out the same happens with the gust it's gonna spread out the wind is gonna shift a little bit outwards so that's how we know how experienced sailors know when there's gonna come a shift and they can anticipate the shifts and they can uh, sail into the shifts properly and they can call them it's not that we would see the water ripples going in a certain di direction a different direction than uh, normally sometimes you can see it but usually it's too small it's too difficult to see and sometimes you might be able to see that a whole gust is moving in a slightly different direction than the rest of the wind but that's also quite unusual and you have to keep following the gust for a long time to notice that so what we can know is that this is gonna happen with all the gusts uh, on some level and then we can know if we reach the gust on the bottom side on the lower edge of the of the gust then we're gonna get a lift if we reach it on the upper edge we're gonna get a header so then we can uh, calculate or we can plan how we're gonna approach the next gust we know where to place ourselves to get the proper shift so you always want to get in on the bottom edge or the outer edge going like this if you would be coming on port sorry starboard these guys are going on port but if you would be coming on starboard then you would want to approach this edge rather than this edge all right so that's one very nice thing to remember and how to know what shifts are coming and the only way to practice this or learn this is to just do it and I want you to, with as much confidence as this sailor here, this happy sailor, just call out the gust. Do like him. You see something on the water. You think, what is that? Maybe that is the gust. And then you just start counting down. All right, gust coming in three, two, one. And then you stay there a little bit confused. All right, nothing happened. And then you're like, okay, guess not, guess not. Apparently not, let's try again. And then you count. Three, two, oh shit, it hit already. I wasn't really aware. And then slowly but surely you'll get better and better at guessing when the gusts are hitting. And uh, now you can't all be doing this at the same time. One of your team, team members needs to be responsible for calling out the gusts. Maybe the shifts as well. When you get more advanced, you can call it. All right, gust coming, it's gonna be a header and uh, so forth but someone is going to need to be responsible for that and we're, we're going to talk that talk about that in a future lecture but this applies to very many things in sailing guesswork just guess start off you have no idea what you're doing it's normal no one knows what they're doing in the beginning you just have to guess you just have to do and slowly but surely surely your uh, guesswork is going to get more and more and more accurate 
and you're gonna be able to with some kind of certainty call out the gusts and then count down count them down all right now if you have any questions or comments uh, just leave them down below and uh, i'll see you in the next video